Yeah. Oh yeah. This year, if, if we maintain eight people, which we won't, like we already know what we want to do this year, but that'll bring in 2 million to do with eight people. Unlock the secret sauce of millionaire entrepreneurs. This is your exclusive VIP pass to the hidden world of the ultra successful business owners. I'm Chad Kaderi, CEO of Dashlix, and welcome to Behind the Revenue. What's going on, everybody? Today we have Mr. Rob Quinn himself joining us on the Behind the Revenue podcast. Uh, Rob, I've had you on multiple podcasts, multiple webinars in the past, and your growth has been absolutely amazing. And I know we're going to talk a lot about that today. I'm super excited to have you on. Um, for context for the listeners, give us like a little elevator spiel about like what, like 2024, where is Rob Quinn right now? If you could just give like a little quick high level overview of what you're doing um, and uh, and uh, I, I guess what's to come, which we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into. Yeah, man. So hello, everyone. Rob Quinn, nice to meet you. Um, so yeah, this year, um, the theme is really just like a uh, super focus, um, just hyper focus. So before we were looking at other companies, uh, involved in other companies, invested in other companies, and now we're a hundred percent keeping the main thing, the main thing. And I will say it takes so much to really understand and comprehend that kind of like Buddha had to get rich before he knew he didn't need to be rich sort of thing. So the sales agency, which has been our baby for six years is a hundred percent getting all of our attention this year. And we're looking to really disrupt the market and how we're taking our approach to the services we do um, versus like what's currently in the market. So that's the 2024 goal. Um, and then- Just a quick really breakdown, quick. like, because I know you've, you've been continuously growing and I want the viewers to kind of understand where you're at. What's team size uh, for your company today at the sales agency? And how yeah. that broken well, down? So today we only have, I think, uh, or, three, four, five. So right now it's only eight people. We had 33. Um, so I, I would love to talk about that and like what it looks like to scale team, when to scale down team and like what people don't realize about growing teams. And there's a lot, there's a lot, but yeah, I'm sure part, we'll cover that today. Part, part of this podcast is also me being super greedy uh, with time, because what I realize is I'm getting all of these people on the podcast that I just want to fire off questions because I want to know how they're doing it so I can take it and put it into my business. Right. So, like, uh, I'm going to be asking you tons of questions. We're going to have some fun today. Um, let's let's. So sales agency last six years, uh, your current team size is eight people. Um, like, what are we talking revenue wise that you guys are doing? And we don't need to get into specifics, but is it multiple seven figures? Yeah. Oh yeah. This year, if, if we maintain eight people, which we won't, like we already know what we want to do this year, but that'll bring in 2 million to do with eight people. Um, eight, eight people, $2 million in revenue. You said eight, eight people, 2 million. Yeah. Wow. Now great. we're going to talk about the growth though and why, um, the profit will shrink a little bit. It just depends on what you're, what you want out of the business, which we've learned a lot of mm -hmm. between the other business we got invested in this business we have for six years and, so I'm really excited to talk about a lot of that. Yeah, let's dive, let's dive straight into it, man. So so talk to me about, I guess, the first thing that I want to ask, and I'm sure people are wondering, you said you had 33 people and you went down to eight people. What yeah. happened? Why? So initially we moved, so that we invested in another business last year. It exploded uh, beyond any pace that we could have projected growth. I mean, it went from, we, we acquired a, uh, like a 50% of the company, so a hefty majority um, in September of 22. And that company went from 250 grand a month to uh, 880 grand a month in three months. Wow. And uh, it just ma massive growth. Um, so we moved majority. Uh, I think we only kept like four people over on the sales agency, restructured the company to be able to increase profit with a small, much smaller team, uh, which meant we had to do less volume. But then we moved all damn, damn near all of those team members over to the other company to sustain that growth. And um, so then we like, it allowed us to restructure the sales agency to be more profitable. So the problem we ran into, and we're just going over all the details, right? Problem we ran into in 2021, which at the time of this recording, it's 2024. But in 2021, we grew you know fairly quickly at the sales agency. You know, went from like 100 and 15 grand a month, like 300 and some odd thousand a month. And uh, 
what I didn't know back then and what I know now is back then I was just hiring for growth, meaning that like I kept thinking I could hire, throw bodies at it, and fix the problem. And uh, that was not how you do it. I came to learn down the road, like you want growth to force you to hire, which is what we're doing this time around and how we believe that we'll be able to get, we don't want to grow as fast this year. We're actually focused on just quality of product is our number one focus. And, um, yeah, and you don't hear as many people talk about that side of it because it's not as fun, you know, um, quality of product fulfillment. So like the majority of our team is on that, on just focusing on fulfillment, quality of product and get into like kind of how we're doing that here in a bit. But, um, yeah, the goal this year is just maintain, um, like around that revenue, two to 3 million, but to, for us to work the entire year. Uh, and like really be invested in like the trenches of each department. Whereas like we weren't building like that before, like we were building to replace ourselves too fast. So a couple of quick questions. First question I have is uh, you said that you guys went in the sales agency, you went from like 115 grand all the way a little tipping over like 300 grand a month, right? Like six months. Yeah. Was... So what, what happened? How did that happen? And what did you guys do? What's the secret sauce? <laughs> Yeah, man, I wish it was something special, but uh, it's really not like there's some people that hit quick. Right. And the reason why some people blow up fast is product market fit. Right. So like you've got something the, the market once and it's really popular right now. You may be first to market on top of it and the economy is in your favor. And you have a price point that just perfectly meshes with the supply and demand, the minimal um, availability for that big demand. And then your avatar is able to pay a specific amount without having to think about it, but it's still enough to justify a high profit margin because you don't have as much operational drag. That's like the perfect storm in your favor, right? Yeah, so you? it did, yeah. And uh, so, add so some, let's add some context into it just for fun. Yeah. What was your avatar? What did it look like? Like, what were you selling? What was the price point? What happened? Yeah. So the perfect storm was remote staffing. And so for us at that time, you know, COVID had just recently finished the entire world knew at this point, okay, I need a remote team. And now everyone was already used to working remote because they had to. So now more people wanted to be remote. So companies had no choice, but to accommodate. And, uh, so like COVID was actually one of the fastest growth years we ever had. That was 2000 and switching over. Everyone yeah. Everyone was switching over in house to fully remote. Yeah. So at that point, other people were trying to hit the market. And uh, since then, other companies have grown faster than us in the recruiting space. But at the time, we had so much brand credibility. We had so much work in that we were able to see what other people were doing, trying to come into the space. And we kind of pulled an Apple, like uh, the Apple company. So like, we don't want to sell a computer. We want to sell a piece of art. And for that reason, we're going to price it at a price point where the market should purchase it at. And uh, so that's what we did. Like, so our goal was to have the most expensive product on the market because we had other things that were working and everything was working great. What was your average like ticket item? Like what was the average uh, value? 25,000. 25K. So you're doing high, I mean, that's higher, higher ticket. Fairly, fairly higher ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so high yeah. ticket sales. And obviously, I mean, going from a hundred to 300 and something thousand, I mean, you literally, you literally at 25K a pop only need, what is that? Like 12 sales. Uh, to literally hit those KPIs and metrics. Yeah. How do you close a $25,000 deal? Uh, so there's a lot that goes behind it, but just like some real concept type stuff, conceptual stuff is like, you got to have a strong brand presence as a company, right? So that's always going to build immediate trust prior to the call. So that's really important to have. That's basically like the whole, sh the whole like foundation of it all. And you can build around that and pretty much never have something that doesn't work. Right. Similar to how you see guys all you're saying essentially brand is everything, right? People buy into yeah. the brand. People buy, people buy to the brand. Uh, and this is I, why influencers are always going to dominate in the yeah. future. I believe in that one, you know, just to piggyback off the story. Um, right now, one thing that we're doing at Dash X is we're, we're focusing on what you just said, like brand, right? Building up our brand because we've been around for a long time. Um, but we realize when people, especially new people, if they come into our platform and we, we run ads and stuff like that, right? So, we used to run ads where we used to just is just straight up direct response like, hey, looking for a white label fulfillment company, create a free account. 
looking for a software to run your agency, create a free account, right? And then what we realized was people would come in, we would have so many people come through the doors and only a small percentage of those people would actually take their credit card out and buy something over time, right? So now what we've been doing, especially for the last couple of months, is we've basically been like warming up our audience and building that brand. So mm -hmm. all the ads that we have are now split up into three buckets. We have uh, cold, warm, hot, and then we have a remarketing bucket. So technically four. And we will only run direct response ads on the hot bucket. We will only do those types of ads where it's like, go create a free Dash X account if you're looking for white label fulfillment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then basically, obviously, the normal Facebook ads where, you know, your, your uh, cold bucket is a lot of uh, video views, just videos, targeting video views. Yeah. And then you're, you know, you're grabbing the people who watched 50% of those videos engaged in the actual uh, ads of themselves, like your page, whatever it is, visited your website, and then showing them now a warm bucket, right? And then we're doing, so what we're doing is we're educating them, we're showing them case studies. We're like basically bringing down the gates for yeah. these people. So when they do come in from that ad that tells them to go create an account, they're more likely to make a purchase a lot sooner because the trust and the credibility is there. One of the main reasons why we're doing this podcast too. Also, it helps with trust, credibility, right? So viewers, make sure you got your shit on point for, for brand awareness because it's, it's yeah. huge. It, it, it literally, like today, it's funny because today, I want to stay on this topic for one second because this is a big one. It's an awesome this, topic, yeah. yeah. This is kind of like the theme of what's happening right now with us at Dash because a lot of, we're putting a lot of work behind the scenes uh, into this. And one thing that we're doing right now is we just transitioned. So we're in the process of transitioning from uh, our Facebook group, which has 7,000 members over to school, to the you know school community, right? Yeah. Fairly new to us. We launched it like, I don't know, like literally like two weeks ago, maybe. So it's like literally new. And the tactic that we're doing is very simple. My goal is to take all of the people that are alive in the Facebook group for, you know, whatever, a couple hundred people are probably alive in there, right? Because Facebook groups die out very quickly, right? Um, whatever people are alive and just posting. So every like two days we'll do a post. Hey, um, uh, we just unlocked a new training. Uh, comment me down below and we'll send it over. And then when we send it over, it's in our school group. So we're like porting people basically in our school group from our Facebook. That's a good group. idea. Yeah. yeah. We got like 450 people in the last, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks ported over and it, it's still happening like every single day. Right. Um, but what I'm realizing now they're in this community and when they're in this community, I'm posting in the community once a day. That's like my thing that I told myself I have to do. I have to post once a day and it has to be valuable content. So I'm posting train and dude, I have like a fucking vault of six years of content, like thousands and thousands of videos, whether it's coaching calls or, or calls from our coaching program or trainings that we've done or webinars or whatever it is. Right. So I'm just literally going into the vault. I'm picking out a video and I'm like, who wants this training? Boom, put it in there. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm repurposing the content that I have. And here's, here's the crazy part. What I'm realizing is, and I'm, I have Stripe open like most of the time inside of, you know, uh, inside to see what's going on for the day. I'll refresh every, every couple hours and I see orders coming in and I'm like thousand dollar, nine ninety seven, dollars uh, 1500 And I'm looking at the people and I'm like, oh dude, that was a guy that just commented on, on the training that I just put in the group. So this guy literally went watch a training, something in there sparked him, right? And he went and purchased something from us, right? And it's happened multiple times in the last two weeks, right? So like community building um, is something that we're, we're relying heavily on this year. I don't know if you remember, oh, I'm sure you do remember this, but like when we launched Dash Clicks, we launched Dash Clicks inside of your Facebook group. Right? I remember that, yeah. Your Facebook group. There that was, was like a fun time, dude. Dude, there was like two or three thousand people in there and we we did a live webinar and i remember there was probably about a hundred people on the call maybe a little bit more than that live on face this is like when facebook live yeah it's a wild west people on right yeah. people used to join facebook lives um but yeah i remember i was jumping on and and just releasing dash clicks into the world into your group there was a couple thousand people in there a couple like maybe a hundred people live and i think we had like within 24 hours like over a thousand people signed up that's uh, crazy. Dash clicks. Yeah. I created a free account, right? So not yep. paid free account because we had a free version, right? But we didn't even have a sign up page. So literally we would have like a form that they would fill out and we would uh, basically take the form fills that, that would come in, people that wanted to create an account. And somebody from our team would have to manually go and actually uh, uh, activate and send an email and password to each one of those users. Like that's how Dash clicks was back in the day, right? So Dude, community building is, I, I can tell you from 
six years now of building community and whether it's on Facebook or now on school or having a podcast or I don't even running like cold ads, right? Like that's still part of like community building in my opinion, like yeah. all that stuff. It helps so much and people don't understand how much it helps. I see so many marketers right now that are focusing, focusing straight up on just direct ads and then they wonder why their content or why their ads are not converting. And it's because no one knows you, likes you, or trusts you. That's the reason yeah. why people don't buy your shit. And like when marketers look at those KPIs uh, and they to determine something isn't working, I would say a lot of owners don't even realize those numbers either, is that I would say people don't like brand and doing brand stuff because it's not an immediate return. Exactly. Yeah, so it's all this effort and they don't realize the compound that effort's having. Yeah. And marketers wow. are greedy at the same time. Yeah. They want results yeah. like yesterday, right? They want to yeah. see those conversions. And yeah, I want to talk about that. We'll talk about Instagram strategy in a sec and like how you can get the immediate result with the branding. Um, Cause you know, I've talked to a lot of my friends doing this and we've just recently switched to putting some more focus on this and it, it's been working, which I know was never a fan of. Um, well, I guess what it, is it? Jump straight in, dude. What is it? Well, I just want to reference the excited. marketing thing first. I want to reference the marketing thing first. So like, that's why they don't like brand, right? But we all know now that brand works alongside the marketing to make it convert better. Well, the marketing doesn't work either when people run direct ads because they don't call the opt-ins. So what ends up happening is like the costs are going up. That's true. And there is this trust recession we're going through right now where it's like there's so much crap. People have been burned so much that people don't have as much trust to give, right? Or they won't give it. So it's like a trust recession. That's why the branding is important, right? Um, but if you call the opt-ins, you can start engaging on those touch points. Right. So even if they don't buy on that, they don't find you interesting. Like, so just how do you do that? Give me an example. How do you do that? Lead comes in from, I don't know, somebody buying maybe I guess sales flyers or I, I don't know. Yeah. So we have a sales script one, which I'll go over. I think what a sales script works is they download it. And then on, it's a really long, like drawn out a word for what our team uses. We build scripts with, and then the videos on how to use each stage. I actually did a role play video attached to a video explaining why we say what we say to each different stage of that sales call framework. And I attach those to YouTube. Yeah. So like when people opt into the sales script, they get this amazing asset, which is only on a word doc. So it's free to create. And then the videos link to YouTube, which is also free to create. And then in the description of my YouTube is to go to Facebook and Instagram, which is free to create. And now we've got these people everywhere because we're posting content everywhere. Community. Community. And so to Instagram though, perfect segue now into that strategy, right? Uh, are we talking, by the way, when you say Instagram, are you talking about like an Instagram page or? Yeah, just Instagram, like personal page. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, so let me, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll go back because I know you asked, how would you approach that call? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we say is like, uh, like, hey, Chad, I saw you just download our sales script recently. Remember that? You'll either say yes or no. I'll be like, hey, no worries either way. Um, what, what offer are you selling right now? Are you a business owner or a sales rep? And you're going to be like, I'm a business owner. Oh, okay, cool, man. What do you guys sell? And now we're in a conversation. So you're using, you're basically using this to get them <clears throat> on the phone and start a conversation because yeah. you know from those conversations you're going to make sales. A, a yes. certain percentage of those are going to convert. And and a, a, another question for you: How uh, everybody's talking about you know um, uh, lead to call, right? Like like, dude, you you need like. I love where this you know, question's going. How quickly are we talking? Because usually I, I think like I've read research where it's like, I think it's after like 15 minutes. Some people don't even remember what the hell they just did. They won't even remember that they filled out that form or they bought that thing like an hour ago. Right. So yeah. What, what are you, what do you, what's like your KPIs that you shoot for? Yeah. I'll even go one KPI further, which is going to be lead, to, oh, lead to sale, not lead to booking, right. Lead to sale. Like what conversion rate you should be shooting for. Um, but, uh, so sorry, your question was, um, Lead to call. How quickly are you calling? Lead to call. To oh, yeah. Within a minute. So Within one minute, how? 60 seconds, right? Yeah. So here's how you do it. Um, so everything shoots to the CRM, right? Like you okay. should have all your leads in a CRM. Everyone knows that. Yep. But um, download that CRM app to your phone or have it attached to your phone and have it beep you every time a lead hits that stage, which should be new opt in or new lead, whatever you label it. Once that happens, you have got to get on your phone call. You got to stop everything you're doing. Now, normally as you build a team, like we have a team that calls them like immediately, right? And then you'll have somebody working weekends as well. It's however you set that up. But like, what, if about, what about after hours? I know that it's obviously you're not going to call somebody at three in the morning, right? 
Oh, if you can, if you have somebody working full time. And so here's the thing. It's like when I worked at the gym, here's what I said to them, because they would say, Rob, stop signing people up at 11 p.m. Right. Those aren't going to be great members because they'll trip faster. And I was like, I'll tell you what, if the club stops being open till midnight, 24 hours a day, I'll stop working longer than everyone else. And I'll stop signing them up. But that's something you got to take up with the CEO. I like that. And so it's the same thing. If people are going to opt in 24 hours a day, what's to say I'm not allowed to call them 24 hours a day. Yeah, I mean, dude, if somebody's opting in, that means they're up. They ain't sleeping. Exactly. And if you're up, then you guys already have something in common. Wow. You know what I mean? So, um, I can imagine how that phone call <laughs> is at three in the morning. Right. Who knows what they're doing? You know what I mean? But it's like for us, like we see people opt into our stuff and it's like, if you're opting into something like that to increase performance or to find a new job at 1 a.m., likely is the pain's great. There's a lot of pain Truth. to make a transition. So it's just a psychology of understanding like the buyer behavior. But um, in the terms of lead to conversion, oh, by the way, that's how you guys do that. So if you didn't catch that synopsis recap, you download it to your phone, have it ping you once it hits the new stage of new lead or whatever you label it, call them right away. You need to collect. Way, I will throw out a shameless plug here, um, but you can do this inside of Dash Clicks. Damn. Um, we have an inbound app that integrates with almost every funnel builder, including ours. Uh, and uh, you literally get pinged. You get push notifications right on your phone as leads come in or as sales come in. So you can like literally open it up and call that person right there on the spot. So it's that, it's that simple. Click. You got to do it. Dash click it, y'all. Dash <laughs> click. Click All it. Right. Hey, real quick, if you're a marketing agency or a B2B service or software provider, Dashlix offers white label fulfillment services and software to businesses just like yourself. Go ahead and create your free Dashlix account. I went ahead and left a link in the show notes, or you could just go to Dashlix.com. So now you called the leads, right? Yeah. You called the leads and you said, you said lead to, lead to conversion. Yeah. Lead, lead to conversion. Yeah. yeah so Let's talk about that. So there's a lot of metrics in between you can track. And so I'm not going to get into all those, but if you guys are curious what those are, it's going to be like, like top level. But yeah. So top level, it'll be like, so if you're going like you're calling the lead, so you've got like lead to triage, then triage to booked call, then booked call to sales call. What is triage? Uh, so there's like three names for it. Don't know why, but like intro call, discovery call, triage, they're all the same thing. Basically it's meant to qualify a lead prior to a sales call. Um, so this way they convert faster on the sales call. Now, there's a lot of ways to build a team. So I don't want to get into a ton of that right now for the sake of time in this yeah. podcast with y'all, but I, but I would love, it's a great topic, but like lead to conversion means that for all the leads that come in, how many of the total amount of leads convert to a sale, right? So this is like very beginning point, very ending point. Like you could not be more opposite ends of the spectrum. It's just like you're straight up your, your close rate. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not even close rate on connected calls, like literally close rate on the amount of leads you're looking for 2%. 2%. Wow. 2%. And here's why. Check it out. Wait, hold on. 2%. Are we talking on a high ticket sale? Because I, I would assume that percentage matters based on what you're selling. Right? It does. Right. So, but here's the math. Check it out. So let's say you're, you're doing a lead magnet, right? Lead magnets are typically the lowest intent right? Because somebody wanting to download something for free. So it's not a big barrier of entry. So it's easy to do. And by the uh, way, your sales script to add some context, your sales script that you're talking about, was that free or is that a tripwire? It's That's free. Paid. It's a free sales script. Okay. Yeah. So we, we get leads between like, it's our average is four bucks a lead. So you have to ask your ads yourself, where on Facebook and Instagram, uh, all Facebook and Instagram. Facebook yeah. And IG. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what do you, uh, where you're, this is the sales script. So I'm assuming you're targeting anyone or are you targeting like agencies only or something? Like that? Um, so it would be anyone okay. because we work with sales reps and business owners. So cool. in my opinion, when you're building a sales team, you don't want to really do that. That's not the most optimal strategy because it's harder to train a team to be that autonomous. Um, so yeah, we are it for a while. So it, it's way tougher. Yeah. So uh, Warren Buffett has a saying like build something that an idiot could operate and then hire smart people to do it. Love that. Right. So this way you get the most out of the vehicle. Um, so yeah, I actually got that from my business partner. He's been saying that all the time recently. That's fine. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, Frankie. So anyway, um, but when you do it, uh, you want to have something that's more direct for a sales team. So we are running more direct ads, but I just can give you guys the example of like the lowest tier thing you can do. So like a lead magnets, like around five bucks. Okay. So let's say you sell a product that is $5,000. Okay. That's, Pretty normal. Let's even go lower, two thousand dollars. Okay, that's even more. Do this real. on, let's say, like a nine ninety seven course. 
Uh, no. Okay. I, I yeah, the, the metrics don't work. Five dollars. Let's say five dollars. That you've got to get a hundred people to sign up. That's five hundred bucks to yeah. sell. Well, technically, you'd make two k because you'd have a two percent conversion rate. So it would yeah. it would depend on your back end sales. Yeah. yeah. So if you have like a if you know what your back end ascension is, which means that like if you sign up a hundred people, you know fifteen percent of the people buy your higher higher ticket thing. Yep. Then like okay, it can make sense. Try to break even or like go red twenty five percent. By the way, not to go on a tangent here, but I, I want to ask this question because I think it's important because um, you're talking about, you know, tracking up higher and, and tracking in itself is super hard. Um, mm -hmm. Are you using like uh, attribution software or like high or like anything like that? We actually use Airtable. Airtable. Um, okay. So Airtable for the back end to track Ascension and uh, accounts receivable percentage and um uh, and a lot of other stuff, which we could talk about too in a sec, but like Airtable allows us to collect all the data like an Excel sheet, but it allows us to be able to create reporting that's custom to the fields. Gotcha. And so we have somebody that manages all of that. So like once a week, they'll shoot us over. So for example, we run a sales school. Um, so it's called Sales University and the certification we sell is the art of sales, which we've had that since forever. Yep. But yeah, so now it's in a school where people go through a four week live class and it's a quick, you know, sprint basically to graduate and certify. Well, we track things like how many people are showing up to the live classes. So we track everyone's attendance. We track how many people have their camera on. We track how many people actually engaged in the class and we track how many people scored a certain percentage, what their earning potential was in the first 30 days after graduating and then over the span of a year. So what this allows us to do is to find the correlation of all these different KPIs and the effectiveness in the workplace post graduating. So that's only possible right. to do. Yeah. If you have somebody hopping on and tracking all, all yeah. stuff. And then we also track the effectiveness of each class because there's a syllabus, right? Per class. Cause we teach the same stuff each time. So we want to know people's feedback for week one, day one, week one, day two, week one, day three. Data, man, data. Exactly. Cause that's the only way you can improve. And the easiest way to improve is to have all the answers to the test, which come from the teacher. The teacher is your client. Just let them tell you. If you have enough of those people telling you the same thing, it's common sense to make an adjustment. I love this, man. So I want to go back. So we said we were talking about top level KPIs, right? We said so 2% oh, yeah. close so let's rate. Run. Yeah, so let's run. for the close rate. What are the other ones? Just so we can go like full circle with this. Yeah. So real quick, too, on the 2%, just give you guys like full, the close that loop. We'll go into the next thing, other KPIs. If a lead costs you five bucks, and then you get a hundred leads, it's $500, right? To, to get a close, you have a $2,000 product, 70%, 75% profit before all other ex expenses, yep. right? So at that point you can say like, and you can do this math prior to running the ad, because if you know that, okay, I need a 2% conversion, that's actually two sales per hundred leads. That means my cost for to acquire clients 250, right? Which means if I have a $2,000 product, I'm making four grand if I spend 500. So what are my expenses that fall into that 3,500? After you calculate that, what is my leftover money, right? Because you got to also costs. don't realize there's like commissions. Right? Commissions, there's ad costs, ad uh, fulfillment costs on the back end, which is labor. Uh, sometimes you have variable labor costs, which is like you pay people more based off, off other incentives. So you have to like know all those things because fixed labor, variable labor, ad costs, commissions. Once you figure that number out, if you're happy with the final profit, why would you do anything different? run the ad. You can't lose. Yep. So Definitely. people are afraid to spend like 500 bucks a day, a thousand bucks a day. And Dude, I can't, I, if I, the second I see something working, I'm the first person to like, okay, take everything I have. Let me just integrate my bank account here and just pull it all out. Yeah. Just dump <laughs> it, dump it. Right. And there, where people go wrong, business owners go wrong doing that is that they stop doing the fundamentals when they start seeing a surplus and they're in this like abundance of leads. So they stop doing the fundamentals of what they did when they only had like five leads a day, they treated everyone like gold. Well, now what do you do when you got 500 leads a day? You're probably like, Oh no, it's good. Like we got so many leads, like keep pumping leads. We need faster conversions, easier conversions. And now they stop doing fundamentals. So the, there's a diminishing return when you stop doing fundamentals wow. to scaling. So, um, but you asked another question about other KPIs. Yeah. So we said 2%, 2% for the close rate. What are some of the other KPIs, like top level KPIs that you look at in your sales organization? Yeah. So um, on a sales team, that's what you're asking, right? Yeah, sales team. 
Okay, so close. I mean, we're looking at a lot. So closers. Um, I mean, I actually have the tracking sheet right here. I could just read off of it. Um, I know you can't share a screen on this. So I won't share a screen on this, but like, yeah, they won't see it. Yeah. So I'll just list some of this off. So like, um, you've got total new meetings on the calendar, total follow-up meetings on the calendar, because those are separate, right? A lot of people don't track those separately. So you're tracking uh, follow-ups too. Yeah. So I want to know how many total calls are on the calendar, how many are new versus follow-up. Cause that tells me that like, if somebody has all new calls on the calendar every day, they're just not working. Right. They're waiting for opportunity at which point says to me that they're not an asset to the company. They're lazy. They're yeah, leech. They're not following up. Yeah. Yeah. So that tells me that number. That's what, so there's something called telling the story from the numbers. That's what that story tells me. Right. So there's also other stories you could tell, but I need other numbers to validate that other story, which is like, do we have so many leads hitting this guy's calendar? He doesn't have room to breathe to book his own. At which point you've got to hire, right? The growth is forcing you now to hire because now you're getting diminishing returns because you can't close follow-ups. What do you, when you dive deeper into that for like 30 seconds here, mm -hmm. at what point do you realize your account executive or your sales or whatever you want to call them um, is like is basically capped out and you need to hire another person? A hundred like, sales calls a month. A hundred sales calls a month. That's, and so that's they assuming they're working five days a week, Monday through Friday, five calls per day, and they're booking at least an additional two themselves, which means the ratio is like 70, 30 new how calls. Many, how long are the calls? Half hour? Um, I'm using the reference of like 45 minutes, 45 minutes. Okay. But, um, and if your marketing is really good, the call should only be 30 minutes or less. Yeah. We've been playing around with that. We actually had our demos at Dash except for 45 minutes for like the longest time. And we just got it dialed in and now we just literally, I think it was like two or three days ago, just brought it down to 30 minutes and we're kind of playing around with that. We're testing that. See if we can get basically more calls booked on a calendar in one day. Yeah. Is that, if that's good or bad. Is it good to have more, like should the rep have back-to-back -back calls for eight hours? So, so a rep should, yes. Right. So I would say like they should definitely have that. And the reason why is because that's their sport, right? So if their sport is sales, then they should be conditioned to play at an Olympic level. Ooh. If they want to be at a JV level, then they should understand they're only going to take a few calls. They're probably going to dick around and they're not going to make a lot of money. Like, but that's what they want. So at that point, is, it, is the company cool with it? Right? So if you're a sales rep that wants to make a lot of money, you cannot expect Olympic gold on JV level preparation. You should show up conditioned to be able to handle those calls, both your mind and your body. If you're not used to taking eight to 15 calls a day, it's hard to do. Yeah, it's very hard. I've done it myself. Yeah. So, um, but if the calls show up where they've already watched a video and they're already acclimated to the brand, so now they've got brand trust and they've got the knowledge behind what the product does, how it's done, and they've seen other people have success, which is testimonials, and they see FAQs, which is what people typically ask on sales calls, and then they hop on that call, it's literally as easy as what attracted you to get here? Did you watch a short video? And do you have any questions in regards to the process of the short video? Was there any part of that video that would lead you to believe that this is not the right thing for you to do? Do you see any risk associated with saying yes today? Have you seen enough? And that's it. Calls do you, over. Do you do discovery calls before those? Yeah. You do. Yeah. What is that? So you're booking them on a discovery call first, qualifying them on the call and then booking them with a yes. Group? Yeah. So we'll call a lead. This is if they don't auto book. Right. So, okay, so if somebody auto books on the calendar, they're going, they're going straight to the sales rep. Exactly. Straight to the sales rep. We're just confirming they're going to be there. And so, um, okay. So in your outbound team, your SDRs, maybe, or whatever you want to call them, um, it's, it may be MDRs. Um, are, they're the ones that are actually calling every single lead that's coming in. Let's just say from the people who opt in for the sales script, as an example, they're yeah. calling them and they're asking qualifying questions to see if that person is qualified. And then they're pushing them over to the sales rep. Exactly. And yeah. If they're not qualified, what do they do? Uh, send them to other resources. Like, do you should go check out our YouTube? We got great stuff on that. Or like, hey, when should I follow up with you based on whatever? Um, ask a fun question here. Yeah. What are the qualifying questions? What makes someone qualified? Finances, desire, and urgency. So I said that fast. Finances, somebody, desire, and urgency. How do you ask somebody if they can afford something without asking them if they can afford something? Yeah. So that would be the last question. So, all right, Chad, cool, man. Looking forward to getting you on here at 2 PM, you know, tomorrow. 
Um, that being said, man, before you get there, I got to let you know, like if there is some alignment between what you're looking for and what we can do for you, there is a cost associated with working with us. Okay. Would you be able to invest a price range between X and Y if we notice at the end of this call, this is something that would work for you? I like that. Very sleek, my friend. Very sleek. Yeah. And if you're like, yeah, dude, I could definitely, I could definitely do that. Okay. Is there any reason you wouldn't be able to make the call? Because, you know, come hell or high water, we're going to be there five minutes early. So you're not waiting on the phone. Like you're going to be there, right? Is there any reason you wouldn't be there? So you, you said there, there was three things, right? You said price. What were the other two things? <laughs> uh, finance, desire, urgency. Finance, desire, and urgency. And what are what do you had like those other two qualifying questions? I'm assuming, right? How do you ask those two questions? Yeah. So, in just context, in case people are wondering what that means, desire is do they want to do the thing? Do they want the outcome you're selling? Yeah. Um, urgency is do they want the outcome now? And finances can they afford to um, use your solution to get the outcome? In case you guys are wondering. Um, By the way, this that what you just said right there. That's the the ball drop. That's the moment for this podcast right there. That was fire. That because that hit home with me because we're literally working on that right now in our sales team. Mm -hmm. Because right now all of our demos are going straight to an AE, and now we want to put in this discovery stage where it's like a little ten minute discovery call. Um, so we're gonna have them book on Calendly first, do like a ten or fifteen minute discovery call, and then if they qualify, we're gonna push them over to a sales rep. Is that yeah. a good idea? Yeah, that's the way we do it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so, so go ahead, continue what you were saying. Yeah. So, um, and the reason you got to you got to do this, y'all, is because if let's say somebody has max desire, couldn't have more desire, but they show up and have no money, that deal's not closing. That happened. That's why we're doing this because we mm -hmm. get so many, especially in the agency space. There's so many people. Like I'll give you a, a pure example. We have uh, Grant Cardone is. Uh, one of our affiliates, he sent a lot of people take his course and he, in the course, in his marketing course or whatever it is that he does, we are the, the vendor for white label fulfillment oh, software cool. for the agencies. So there's a lot of people aside from him, well, a lot of obviously other people, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, you have somebody that's like, Hey, yeah, I just, I just took Grant Card I spent like a thousand bucks or 1500 bucks. I just bought Grant Cardone's course and I'm just getting started with my agency. Right. And then they jump on a, a demo for Dash X and they're like, Oh, I just, I just bought his course. I don't have money to do anything else. Right. So it's like we, we get a, we get that a lot. So now we want to throw that discovery call in there to weave those people out because our sales reps are having to deal with that all day. Well, not all day, but like a pretty big amount, like yeah. maybe 20, 30 percent of the people just don't they can't even afford to buy what you have, even if they wanted to. Right. Yeah. So, so let's continue with the other. With the other yeah. Side. And there's there's so much strategy with like knowing those numbers, hiring a sales team. What caliber of sales team can you hire? Like. So we don't have to get into that, but like, that's what makes hiring teams difficult depending on the type of company. Yep. Um, but I don't want to like get too lost here. So like yeah. finance, desire, urgency. Um, other part of that is that they have all the money in the world, but they have no desire for the outcome. You're not making that sale either. Yep. And the urgency, if that's lacking, but they have all the finance and desire, unless you're extremely good at sales, you're not going to get that sale. Now, like I had somebody hop on, they wanted to get started in June and they have st getting started in January. And uh, it's because I could create the urgency. They had the money, they had the desire, they didn't have the urgency. I can create the urgency, right? How do you create it? Uh, by creating Some offer discounts. No, man, I'm not a car dealership. No, <laughs> no, dude, come on. Like, would you trust me more if I charge you less? Probably not. So, like, when I see this, um, I need to create a gap to increase perceived value to justify a higher price point purchase. Um, because people like, if they look at a Ferrari, they're not going to be like, oh dude, that's not worth that kind of money. Like people that understand cars wouldn't say that. Right. Um, but if you saw a Ferrari that was being sold for a thousand bucks, you'd be like, that's garbage. It's something's wrong with it. Right. So that's just how Carfax, Carfax, Carfax. Carfax. Get Carfax. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, that's why you have to be able to, oh yeah. So increasing, uh, urgency. So to create the gap, you have to figure out. Uh, two things is going to be quantifying upside, which is like, where do they want to go? What does that picture look like? Whether it's a number or a feeling or whatever. So that's going to be quantified. So, and then the downside, which is the cost of doing nothing. And then how long has that been taking place? So you take whatever the cost is for a month times how long it's been taking place, multiply the two that's quantifying. That's a hard number. And now you can say, well, it sounds like you lost a hundred grand the last six months. How long can you sustain that? Mm. And it's like pain. 
Exactly. So like, and then the upside, it's like, look, you've already lost a hundred grand over the last six months, right? You're telling me that if you apply these things, we've already gone over that you'd be able to make an additional 10 grand a month. Can you justify spending $5,000 with me? If you knew it would save you a hundred grand over the next six months and make you an extra five grand a month. Like, could you justify spending two grand for that or five grand for that? I love that. See so how much easier it is. So that's urgency, right? And then uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Creating the gap, the urgency and, um, and then what do you do for desire? Like, how do you make somebody want something? Um, I don't, I'm just like, they either do or they don't. Right. Like, um, like, so I, that's where like the ethics come into play where it's like, I'm not going to trick somebody into believing they want something they don't really want. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to tell them like, Deuce, are you currently in the market looking for new roles, uh, as a sales rep? And they're like, yeah, dude, I've been looking at all these different things. Okay, great. How long have you been doing that? Dude, I've been looking for like three months. If somebody says I, it just started, like it's going to be harder to close that person. Somebody has been looking for a long time. So I know they have the desire they, or they'll tell me they're like, dude, I'm looking for higher income roles or whatever. Like that tells me that they want this thing. It's like with us, like for us, cause I'm trying to like, I'm trying to take what you're saying and apply it into our business. Right. I'm trying to like, my mind just starts going off. And well, like, we can go over your business too. We can talk about that. Yeah. Like for, uh, for <laughs> us, like, like, cause we have two sides of the business, right? We have the software and then we have the fulfillment, like for the fulfillment, like we have people that come to us with no clients, right? Cause they just started, but they want dash. So they want it. They can't even do it. Like, so it's like the desire is there, but they just they yeah. can't even do anything. So that's a finance thing. So check this out. So if I said to you, if somebody said that to me, the response is, okay, so what are you doing right now for income? They tell me. Okay. So you want to start an agency. So you don't have to deal with problem, problem, problem. So how long can you sustain this? Well, I don't know. I won't be able to get my agency started. I won't be able to do anything, you know, unless I have an agency going. Okay, great. So look, I'm not going to charge you anything more than the problem you're already facing. You make one payment to me. Cause here's the reality. You're uncomfortable making the payment and you're uncomfortable dealing with the reality you're in, which you've been doing for six months, no matter what, when you leave this call today, you're going to feel uncomfortable whether you pay me or don't pay me. Can you give me one? I'm just going to go grab my credit card. Give me one sec. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, these, you're going to feel uncomfortable either way. So I would challenge you to feel uncomfortable in a way that's going to empower you next month, not in a way that's going to keep you broke. Dude. Would you be open to exploring ways we could make that happen? Why? Well, yes, I would. And and then, then you go into like either. Yes, if, I would, sir. Yeah. And then, and then you get into the money logistics, right? And that conversation is there's other ways to handle that, but. But that's how you transition into making it only money logistics and not smoke screens and limiting beliefs. I love it, man. All right, let's go because I know we're going off here. Let's go back really quick. Oh, so let's let's circle back because I, I could we could talk about sales and stuff for, for days. Um, let's go back really quick. So we we talked about close rate, right? We said two percent. We try to do that, right? And then we just we we're just now obviously we tangent off into uh, uh, desire and price and urgency and all that stuff, right? Let's go back. I just want to get like, if you could just quickly in like 30 seconds, just, just name, I won't even, I, I, I keep bothering you. We go that we keep diving deeper. Just, just go through the top level metrics that you're tracking for a sales rep. Just list them out. Okay. So I'm just going to just drop these right now. Yeah, so we already talked about total calls on the calendar, new calls versus follow up calls. How many do you connect with, which is going to tell you what your show rate is. Mm -hmm. How many offers do you make, which is going to give you an indication of lead quality of calls showing up. Um, what is the no show rate based off of new calls versus follow up calls? What is the total, uh, follow up calls booked? How many of the follow up calls booked are advancing to deals closed? That's going to let me know based on how many are follow ups. Do you know that they're closing or are they just like telling you they're going to close and then they don't, I'm going to look at how many deals were sold, which is going to tell me is it first call closed versus second call closed. Uh, and what is my total close rate on connected deals versus offers made? And then I want to know what percentage is being sold per product. Meaning that if you have multiple products, I want to know, <clears throat> are you selling a lot of the lowest ticket thing? Are you selling only the high ticket thing? Or is there a healthy balance? This tells me that where we could improve in the other metrics, because I know where your mindset is at getting on the call, which means that if you only sell the high ticket thing, not the other stuff, odds are your offer percentage is lower because you're go only wanting to sell the big thing and you're not downselling, mm. right? So there's there's a lot of ways I look at the numbers wow. to tell a story. And uh, I also wanna know cash collected on connected, on the POS, point of sale. Because somebody that doesn't collect a lot of cash at the point of sale, 
unless you can only sell contracts, which is an unusual situation. But if you collect more cash at the point of sale, that means the buyer has more conviction, which means you're going to get better testimonials, referrals, et cetera, on the back end. And on the other end of the spectrum, if you collect a low amount, a low amount of cash, typically uh, not as great of a client, typically the higher dispute rates, typically the hardest client to manage. So it requires more bandwidth for less money because they probably won't pay you the rest of the payments anyway. So these are all the things that I'm able to coach a rep up based off of numbers. That is insane, dude. And uh, I want to ask a question to dive deeper into this because how how are you tracking all of this? Because uh, you have to do obviously it's a lot of manual stuff because we track too, not as much as you're tracking, right? But like it's it's fucking manual and it sucks. Is there yeah. a, is there a better way or are you just straight up? It's old school, just manual grabbing all. I'm, of I'm sure there's a better way, but it's manual for us. We got an yeah, Excel sheet. Too, dude. Yeah. Uh, there's, I mean, I know HubSpot has a lot of ways to do it. Um, Salesforce has a lot of ways. I love Salesforce, but they're so hard, expensive and so hard to get to that point. Like we've improved our Excel sheet. Like we've been using the same one for like years. We keep improving it. So data better aggregates and it just looks really good. And the reason why I like the reps and we teach reps in our school, how to do this and read numbers and everything is because when a rep learns this stuff, they're never going to be a victim to the economy or to the business being underdeveloped because they can come in and they have the empowerment of knowledge to know where the gaps are without getting advice from that business. Like and training themselves almost. Exactly. So that's how they also become leaders, right? In a company and not just sales reps. And how, how is a sales team <clears throat> well, more, let's say sales organization, right? This is the way that I look at it. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. I'm probably wrong. Okay. I mean, I'm more of a marketer than a sales dude. I'll be honest with you. Um, sales team. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, there's your sales manager. Then there's uh, under your sales manager, there's your account executives. And then under your account executives, there's your MDRs, right? Um, and then under your MDRs, there's your SDRs. Hmm. Is that um, it'll question? depend on the company, right? It'll depend on size of company and like Let's talk about your... dash clicks. <clears throat> for dash clicks. Um, I don't know because you have... So it would be about price point, right? So like if you're noticing that it's harder to get in front of a buyer because you're dealing with so many leads that are giving you that objection, and that one's a tough one to, to overcome, right? Consistently, if you're not selling high ticket, because then it's like, is it worth the time? Because what you have to look at is if you have an assembly line, what you just listed, setter, closer, um, then you have your uh, team leads, which are SDR, team lead, closer, team lead, assistant manager, manager. Like if you go through this whole hierarchy, it's like, how many inputs does an SDR have to do to get paid? And let's say I have a salary, and at which point does it make sense to justify that salary? I want to walk you through what we have. And I want you to tell me if it's good or bad or shit, or we need to change it. And I'll do it right here live on the call. Then let's, let's go. Yeah. So we have, uh, we have one SDR that just does outbound all day. They're inside of call tools. Um, and they're on a predictive dialer. They do on average of about 1,000 to 1,500 uh, dials a day on a predictive right um probably about like a 10 percent connect rate so there's they're they're probably speaking Love that. yeah probably speaking maybe 75 100 people a day conversations right uh throughout the day that actually get human That's interactions good. yeah um, some of those also fall into like voicemails and crap like that so maybe a little bit less but mm -hmm. out of that um on average we're probably booking about five demos per day right so these are marketing agencies uh, and it's mixed We have different campaigns and call tools. So we'll have a campaign of people that signed up for to Dashlix but didn't schedule a demo, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll call them and we'll get them to schedule a demo. That's our hot bucket. Uh, and then we have our win backs, which are people that signed up to Dashlix in the past, but basically 45 days didn't buy anything uh, or didn't uh, log into their account. We call them and try to like re-engage them basically and get it back on a demo. Like, hey, this is all new stuff that's happening at Dashlix, right? All that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we book a demo there. Uh, and then we have our cold list, which is the big list, which is just marketing agencies don't know anything about dash fix, right? So we're just cold calling at that point, right? So we're booking on average between those three buckets, about five demos per day for the SDR. Okay. <clears throat> we didn't have an MDR. We we're hiring an MDR because I told you we're just now implementing, we're, we're, we're having an issue with quality, right? Because they're booking those calls. And by the way, those Aside from those five calls from that SDR, we get calls booked from all over the place because when you come into the dashboard, you can book a call. We send you an email, a text when you sign up where you can book a call, right? There's many different places where you can book calls, right? So uh, the, the, the AEs are filled up with calls, right? 
-hmm. But um, now, so right now, I'll talk to you about what's happening right now and then what we want to do, right? So right now, that's what we have. It's So SDR is just straight booking calls for the account executive. Uh, account executive is doing now, it was 45 minute demos. Now we brought it down to 30 minute demos. At the end of the demo, our goal is to get them into our world with a sale, right? Um, and uh, that is usually probably either one of our 997 products, which is like a either like kind of like an agency start. We call it agency booster kit mm -hmm. um, or just get them on a subscription to Dashless, give them like some type of promotion to get them on a, you know, first month, 50 percent off um, would be like a, a total down sale. Um, and we have some products in between that we kind of like start high and kind of work our way down depending on budget and all those all those different variables. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then. So that's basically that. And then uh, somebody that just basically manages kind of that. And that's myself, by the way. Um, uh, but I'm just plugging that in for like people to understand. So uh, and that's very minimal because there's only two people on that team. Right. Um, so super minimal, um, not a lot of work. And that's just really like collecting metrics, um, you know, reviewing some calls, feedback, stuff like that. That's okay. basically what we have. And now we're adding an MDR in between the SDR and the AE to now create the qualification basically. So just to qualify more. Okay. So I would have the SDR be that person, uh, the MDR. So like they'd be calling and qualifying. That's, that's how we do it. Like that's what they're responsible for. Okay. Um, <clears throat> depending on the commission opportunity, like I would want just based on the price point and the conversion rates, sometimes in situations like this, it actually helps to have a hybrid rep and pay them a little bit more on a sliding scale. So like 20% commission on everything they close, which they're calling and closing it, which isn't attractive to most people, but like they get paid 20% plus a sliding scale up to 30%. You're it makes it the SDR slash MDR. Uh, they would just become the whole person, SDR, MDR closer. They'd be one, one person. The problem is we can't, we can't, we, we have, there's a lot of volume. So that person can't do everything. Well, so that would be, that's the obstacle to that is like the volume is always going to be less, but can it justify the commissions they need? in order to join the team because they need a higher commission rate. So it just depends what types of people you want on the team. Cause like a closer, unless they can make a certain amount, which so many people in this online space want to make like 10 K a month as a closer, like not every offer can support that. Correct. And, but it doesn't make it a bad offer. It just means like there's other opportunities in the company, which is what we try to teach reps. Um, so yeah, it just really like that. So to answer your question, short answer is, that structure works to keep the MDR as the SDR. That's one person. And by and the, the way, and I'll add context to it more so you can even add more detail. The SDR right now gets a uh, salary plus um, we have a, a tiered structure. There's four tiers based on showed appointments. So they mm -hmm. get paid like, you know, if they there's X amount of showed appointments, they would hit this bonus tier, right? And they'd get that. At yeah, that's awesome. Right? So that's yeah. basically what we have for the SDR. And then obviously AE is, is commission based. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I would just 10, 10% or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Yeah, I would just add in a video in between, like what, which is what you guys are already doing now, which is uh, what the SDR will send to the prospect prior to meeting with the closer. And they're just confirming they watched it prior to the call. Um, so, ex so, so explain that. So I book, let's say I book a call. I'm now also sending them a video. Yes. Hey, I'm just going to send you a quick video. What's in that video? What am I doing in that video? Um, it's going to show you. So it's going to have three things. It's gonna, the, I'll explain the short video. Underneath that is going to be testimonials, written and video. Ideally, if you can get short video testimonials, longer interview testimonials, and written testimonials, it will resonate with however that person receives information. Yeah. And then you have FAQs under that. And then the video itself, which is on the top, is going to explain um, who this is for, what the outcome is, whenever you go through this process, what the process looks like, how long it's going to take, what risk is associated with doing this. And if it goes wrong, what are you going to do for them? And if you put all that in the video, they sh and the FAQs and the, the show rate, right? You want to increase huge the show, show rate. rate. And when they do show up, they're like, yeah, dude, I know everything. Yeah. And what do you do if somebody doesn't show up? If they don't show up, like they no show the call. Yeah. What do you do? What's we just stay. In got their, what is it? We just stay in front of them. And to be like, yo, did you die? Like our guy was sitting here, like, you all right? Like just make standard sure everything's follow okay. up. Yeah, standard follow up. Cool. Unless they no show us three times. <laughs> At that point they just Yeah. Do you also have somebody like for us, we used to do this, our SDR actually used to do this, but they used to call 
every call uh, like a couple hours before it was scheduled to confirm basically that they were going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. So we always do end of day confirmations, start of day confirmations. And then what does that mean? End of day, um, start of day. So end of day is like the calls for the next day, but you booked it earlier that day or you booked it prior to that day. We're going to say, Hey man, just want to make sure you're still good for the call tomorrow. Very simple message. In the morning we say, Hey, Chad, just want to make sure you got the link for the call today. Even so if calling that person twice before the call. Um, that'll just be a text. Oh, it's a text message. I got yeah. you. Okay. So is that, that one's just can you use like calendar reminders for that? Because that's what we do. So the, you can, but they know it's typically a calendar reminder. Um, those typically become white noise and they usually don't respond to it. We're looking for engagement. Gotcha. Okay. The engagement shows the additional interest yep. level. Um so and you know her movie that we do do just as a side note i don't know if it works or not but it actually it works pretty well for us is inside of calendly they have like a reconfirmation um text yeah. message that goes out i'm sure you're probably familiar with it where he basically sends out a link and it's like hey is it confirmed you're going to be on the call and we write a custom message basically saying uh hey our call's in an hour or whatever two hours uh do me a favor if you're going to show up just click the link below to confirm so we don't cancel the call out right uh, and then yeah. they'll, they'll click the link and in Calendly, you basically see like invitee confirmed. Yeah. And that's a and pretty cool feature that we've been using. We started using it a couple months ago. Yeah. I would just track the, the engagement rate around it. Cause the whole goal is to just collect engagement rate. We've noticed with the automations, people don't respond as well. Um, and we don't want to send them the link. We just want to ask them cause it's already in the invite. Yeah. Right. We're just trying to get them to say something to us. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so that's, yeah, that's the only reason we do it. But you know, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. That's why I love sales and business. Uh, there's some core fundamentals that will always hold true. They're timeless. But as it relates to the economy, types of offers, price points, sales cycles, I mean, contracts versus non-contracts, like there's so many ways to handle, do something. All yeah. right. I know we're going overboard. We're, we're, we're running out of time here. Obviously, we, could, we and you can sit in a room together and literally be all day and just talk all day, right? So we're, we're definitely going to get you back on, Rob. Uh, uh, but, dude, if anybody wants to get more information or wants to connect with you, Rob, what's the best way? Yeah, I would say um, you could email us at support at the sales agency dot com. If you want to just mingle with me, you know, go check out Instagram or Facebook. My name is just Rob Quinn three on Instagram and just Rob Quinn on Facebook. And that's Rob with two B's, R-O-B-B. Um, and yeah, we'd love to be able to, you know, I'd love to answer some questions if you got any. So, you know, we staff businesses, agencies and coaches with sales reps. And if you're in the offline or online sales space as a sales rep, we make sure you go through the school and you get great opportunities with our clients. So dude, love it, man. Thank you so much once again for jumping on with us. I'm going to leave this call and going to rebuild our wholesale department <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, but seriously, man, thank you so much. And I'm sure we will see you again. Another podcast here shortly. My pleasure. Hi to y'all. Thanks for having me on. Hey, do you want more of the Behind the Revenue podcast? Look, join our private Facebook group where marketing agencies from all over the world are sharing strategies, network, and scale their businesses together. Visit facebook.com slash groups slash dash clicks to get instant access. And also, if this podcast helped you in any way, please do me a favor, share it with friends, leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify. That really helps build our community.